way better. At 6.30. Okay, any additions, adjustments to the agenda? Uh, I do have a couple. Um, first is for the easy, uh, we've received Raven, uh, Raven's resignation from the Racial and Social Justice Committee. Okay, let's stop there. Okay, what's the yep. next one? Uh, the next one is, uh, you have the forms, you received them today for uh, employee reviewing the highway operator position. Um, the form has been updated based on the feedback that we that I received uh, the last time we had, you know, from our first go round of updated uh, review forms. So if the board's willing, I can present those tonight. Is the board interested in that one? I honestly didn't get a chance to review it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it would be good if Eric was here when we give the final approval on it, just in case there's anything related to your union negotiations that comes up as part of this. But again, I don't really know because I haven't spent much time. Yep. On it, so I think that's fair. Yeah, that's fine. So let's put this one in. Uh, uh, and that's it. Yeah, anyone else? I got something I want to bring up on your select board issues, but I don't think it needs to be on a specific agenda. Excellent. Okay. Uh, next up is reviewing invoices and orders. Here we go. Ready? Uh, Allegiance Trucks towing tandem outside repair 5712. Alliance Mechanical Maintenance, $649. What was that for? Does anyone know? Uh, that was our routine maintenance. Routine. Was... Okay. Yeah. So is it all in good shape for the upcoming winter? It needed a little touch up. Uh, there were, let me see if I remember the everything. We were low on Freon, or not Freon, whatever they use now. Uh, and there was a problem with some of the hookups for the unit uh, right down here. Some of them had been broken at some point um, and they were repaired and replaced. Okay, um, Brasso Fuels, Tom Diesel Tank, Equipment and Fuel Oil, $5,745.01 with $1,993 due from the village for a total of $6,844.94. Country Home Center, free board expense of $4,788. Train project, trailhead building, $40.02. Welcome Center, trailhead building, $145. Lease in the village, eighty-four ninety-five. Uh, salt shed, sixteen seventy-four, and we had a credit balance of negative two hundred ninety-nine dollars and eighty-eight cents, which made a total spend of sixteen cents. Do we know what the credit was for? Okay. Was that with? Country Home Center. Country Home Center, okay. Okay, uh, great new graphics, mural for beautification, 8916. Johnson Hardware and Farming Rent, uh, Hardware and Rental, Johnson Hardware and Rental. Finance charge of $1.19, finance charge of $2.14. Um, marking wand, for the tree board expense, $32.95. Insurance visit, facilities and maintenance, $79.52. What does that mean? Um, we said orders and stuff at the insurance person said we needed to go with recreation. I gotcha. Okay, so that's, that's under Johnson Hardware Rental. Yeah, page 305. Buildings, uh, just 
Asphalt repair, uh, eight ninety eight supplies, parts and parts and supplies, fifty seven fifty three, a credit of five ninety nine. Silver fertilizer, $827.92. You know what that was for? Don't remember specifically. I know we're using that uh, for reseeding the ditches wow. as we're digging them. I, That's probably the seed. Yeah. The seed is for seeding. Um, I know I've got a little bit more discussion about that and that we ran out of a, a we ran out of a couple of the things that are uh, hydro cedar needs and had to replace a couple of them kind of ad hoc and then i've gotten our plan purchases you know a, a real buy of uh, supplies again. um i just want to be careful about thinking that the fertilizer we're paying almost a thousand dollars just because yep. um, it does say clover mix mixed with clover number 50 core units fertilizer 50 pounds eight units it's not okay. it's, um and then a credit of fifteen twenty seven for a total of nine hundred eighty eight dollars and ninety seven cents. Jordan's Home Service Cleaning two hundred and forty dollars for Holcomb House. Menashe Sand two thousand eight hundred eighty dollars and fifty four cents. Northern Forest Canoe Depths at Talcott River uh, twelve hundred dollars. Can I just go back to the Jordan Holcomb House? That, so they've been in and done their cleaning? They have. I have not had a chance to inspect it yet. Uh, but she came in over the weekend, this past weekend. Okay. Uh, Jordan's Home Service Cleaning, 275 $275.86. Professional training fifty dollars and beautification forty dollars. Um, do we know what the two hundred seventy five dollars is? flowers, That's a printing expense, also. Mm -hmm. I think that was covered under the, I think we mentioned great big graphics, right? Yeah, okay, Billy House is the two or so you have space as well. Okay. And then the last one was square card. You're the what? Oh, these. Uh, Howard Romero, uh, Trail Health Building. You know what that is? Yeah, seven hundred and twelve fifty. It is combined. The uh, we had agreed to pay Howard about five hundred dollars the balance of the phase one, and we got invoiced for that so that that's finally ready to go out and uh his electrical work uh, and the, the work that he did assisting the electrician uh, has also been completed and he invoiced us for both so i'm a little bit worried about that because that seems like a conflict of interest if he's approving spending and also charging spending So it's reimbursement for labor, but was that cost part of the electrical cost? It was. All of his costs were included in his initial estimate. So all the costs and, were in the budget. And he didn't go over. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, I have the same comment for any future activity, regardless of who it is. I don't care who it is. Like we should just we should have checks and balances. Nate, uh, Nat King rather has been reviewing those as well. Yes. So I, I think both Matt Kinney and I have reviewed uh, that work as it's come out. Okay. So I think there have been other that's audits that check. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, Ross Environmental Services uh, landfill, $3,010.95. What is that? That's just the bore samples, isn't it? Uh, Ross Environmental, I believe that's the old landfill up on that's the um, sample every six months yeah okay so is that is that his annual fee for that or it's half is that semi annual quarterly not quarterly it's at least close to okay. yeah i'd have to look at the invoice and remember offhand the details but it's i think it's twice a year and that's the landfill up across the street from Tomato? No. No. Uh, that's the old landfill where the okay, transfer so station is now. Okay. So it includes a subtotal of $295 for project coordination at $80 an hour. It includes a subtotal of $845.90 for field sampling. Field sampling, a hydrologist, hydrogeologist, right word. Mileage, interface probe, water quality meter, sample material fee. All is included in the And then there's another charge, another subtotal of $1,160. And that is for summary report administration, field technician two, and a senior hydrogeologist. We, we get the test results. On the test the monitor route, right? Yes. And do you remember seeing anything from Agency Natural Resources indicating whether or not we're ever going to be able to get out from under this testing requirement? They haven't given any indication that that will be the case. Are there, are I hesitate to try and quote from the report from memory. Nothing stood out in the report, though. Um, you know, it, it was. Not anything that I would get hopeful about them. They were not saying that this is clearing up and we're going to be fine. It's continued monitoring. Uh, sounds, but, like, sounds like something that's going to be baked into the budget for perpetuity with a nice escalator. Well, that's my that's my point. Is that, you know at some point in time, I think it's maybe worth spending a few minutes of your time talking with somebody at the agency and Bob Ross. And, say you know are we ever going to be able to get out from under this if 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 the if there are triggers on the water quality testing results chances are we're going to be stuck with having to monitor monitor for that but if it stayed pretty you know pretty level over the course of time maybe there's a chance that they'd let us out of it it's worth a, it's worth it's worth checking yeah, we've got a landfill how far from a river? Well, they're there. Yeah, I mean, that, the monitor wells are all down slope of the where the landfill was right. between there and the river. So that's what they're, you know, that's what they're checking for. A few years ago, they actually were taking water samples in the river itself to try and figure out if there was any migration you know, into the river. That sounds like it would be cheaper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. No, no the, well, the monitor water water was water drilled. I think probably it'd be cheaper not to have to do remediation of the river. Okay. Point made, though, for the long term. Yeah. Okay. Um, On the positive side, we haven't, they haven't made us come in and do any massive remediation. Yeah, it's yeah. basically monitoring at this point, the which is based on which is based on rock the cradle. Yeah, well, it's 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 based on the fact that the monitor test if uh, believe me, if if the test 
results were really bad, yeah. we would be doing some remediation work. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Stitzel, Page, and Fletcher legal fees of $5,689.48. Dory Porter, economic consult. Um, two publications for $98.50. Um, the Vermont Municipal Clerk uh, Annual Clerk Conference, $330. Um, BLCT quarterly dues. But, Unemployment for unemployment, sorry, yeah, um, a total of $292. Um, the LCT property and casualty quarterly dues $11,536.50. Vermont Department of Health and Graver and Grave Paper Supplies $38. Hmm. That's a good one. Well, I'm very thick, but it's Okay. Approve minutes. Um, well, review and approve minutes, obviously. I move to approve the minutes of August 15th. Just to be sure, are we sure that it, it was August 15th? I would second if you'll accept a friendly amendment. You Can I second with the Proposed friendly amendment of the header on item number 19 was being changed. It was the 15th. Item number 19 needs to reflect an executive session on updating litigation. It just looks like a copy paste error. I got to hold it on about it. I just need your back. I would certainly accept the uh, proposed correction. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next up is select board issues concerns. Duncan, you've got the floor. Okay. Um, most of them are cemetery related. So I, I have a map that I drew to scale, which Brian has a copy of. Um, I think it would be great actually if we you know could get a copy of this for everybody. Yeah, okay. Can we escalate maps and just get all the maps we've been talking about forever and just fire next select board meeting? Can we get some maps of those? Sure. So my hope would be that we could actually act on this map. What what this is basically is vacant, um, what I believe to be vacant potential plots. And I the you advantage of this right? is Evergreen Ledge. Okay. And it's the so-called new portion. Uh, the westerly end of the cemetery, which is Evergreen Ledge is. Evergreen Ledge is the one down here, okay. on 15. Um, so I think it would really, it's the only one that we've got left that has basically any spaces. So the one in front, Clark, over there is full? That's Lemoyle View, and it's not a town center. Oh. It's a private, private oh, cemetery. cemetery. Yeah. And they're on board. I should be in there on that list. Yeah, so so this one, I'm hoping we can get this as an actual agenda item. What I would like to do is have everybody kind of take a map home and look at it or review it. Um, it would make it a lot easier, I think, as a final analysis for Brian when he's trying to draft a deed for you guys when you're, for us, when we're trying to review it. Do you want to see it? Can I make a suggestion that we, instead of having three copies for everyone, that we have a digital copy on our website? And where, where are we supposed to learn from this stuff? What's the point? The, the idea is that the board ultimately, if, if the board adopts this, then it would allow Brian when he's drafting a cemetery deed, which ultimately comes to us as a board for approval. Okay. Um, would the, the board actually approve? Well, I have, have the best. Yes. I mean, it, it lost it. So. I, I would suggest that if we did this, that a deed could just be drawn based on these lots. Okay. And Brian probably wouldn't have to bring this to us for approval. I mean, you know? Is that the same one that you sent us last year? I sent you a digital map. Is it that same uh, one? It's basically the same thing. Yeah. Basically. 
I think it's probably identical. There have been a couple burials in there since then, which would probably need to be updated. Could you update that and send that to the whole board? I could. What I did was I took a picture with my phone. If, yeah. if that's you know if that works, that totally um, works. Yeah, we can we can do that. The other thing I could do is just scan it and then merge the scan copies together. It would probably be like dimensionally be a better representation. Yeah, and I don't, I, you know, I don't know how you could scan something that big with our Let's do it in parts pieces and then we'll merge them into a single file. Yeah. I can do it. it if, if you come by. The office will get the scans made and then whoever's got experience and time and merge them into it. Go to Evan, he volunteered. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, what? Yeah. so in the end, we're going to approve this map. That's what you want us to do. Uh, ultimately, I'd it. like I'd like to everybody to look at it and if everybody's good with the basic layout, approve it. And then I think that just makes it a lot easier for, you know, for the. Why would I not approve it? Um, well, I think you should look at it. it you know, I have um, roadways in with recommended widths. Um, and if anybody's uncomfortable with, you know, that layout, I can, you know, I can try and adjust the, the plots. The only um, person I can think of having feedback would be Brian and Evan. I'm not having any feedback with our card to tell you. So you already got two volts. Don't mean anything. So you, got you already got votes. you yeah. already got three volts. It sounds like you can do it tonight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, another cemetery item. I was approached this morning, in fact, by uh, a gentleman who's concerned about the condition of some of the stones up in Plot Cemetery. Yep. Um, ben over. There's a stone for Ben over that's actually on the ground. If I if I have a chance or time i would uh, i was actually thinking of going up there and trying to reset that stone um but i think i should ask the board's permission to do that yeah. if that's amenable i think so any objections motion to grant permission and the other second. thing that i would say motion and second all those in uh in favor can, can uh, we, he, he's got a friendly amendment can we hold hold the thought because yes. um the other possibility would be um, the Vermont Law Cemeteries Association um, does do volunteer days in town cemeteries. Um, I would be interested in trying to organize uh, a work day. Um, so basically, if your motion would entertain the possibility of a work day with the Vermont Law Cemeteries my, Association. My motion included that. I, I thought it did. <laughs> <laughs> and your second did too, I'm sure. I was all over it. Okay. 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 And shall we vote again? All those in favor? Sure. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, Duncan. Yes. Yeah. Duncan's okay. abstaining. Excellent. And the other one finally was uh, maybe Brian can give us a little bit of a report on where we are on row um, with the fence. I, I was thinking I may not have time to do that this year, but you know, that might be another volunteer effort to, if the town were willing to buy defense materials to establish a volunteer day and go up and put some of the And that's the cemetery on Hundred Sea Corner? No, mm -hmm. that's Whiting Hill. Grows the one up on, off, um, it's on Waterman. Off Waterman Road. Right below the bridge, right above uh, the bridge. It used to be, it used to be Sterling, town of Sterling. Right. Is that the one that we're talking the fence about? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and that you know that again. I don't think if I if I'm able to get something going on plant cemetery, I'm probably not going to be able to establish a right a volunteer thing for growth. Um, but I think that's a you know the the cost of the cost of that fencing just. Uh, Remind about this afterwards on the one of the things that's not important for this. Okay, and then the final thing I wanted to just check for the board on. Um, I, I asked Nat Kinney about this. Um, you've all seen, I think, the panels, the historical society panels that we put up in the rail trail building. Um, I, as far as you know, tagging, I think it, you know, it could be cleaned up. But if somebody takes a screwdriver or a key or something and scratches those panels or you know, really defaces them, so my thought was. Um, Putting a sheet of plexiglass over those panels 
I've done some research. The cheapest I can get is through Country Home Center. Um, it's seventy dollars per sheet for a total of one hundred and forty dollars. I asked Nat if there was money available or left in the budget. He wasn't sure, um, but if there is, we could just run it, you know, run it through that. If if not, would the board authorize an expenditure of one hundred and forty bucks to cover those panels? Um, I would say we should wait and see what the budget is first. But is that project completed, closed out, <coughs> done, energized? Not yet. We're waiting on the electrician for his uh, energizing permit that he needs to deliver to the village. Do we know where that is? No. I was it's kind of powered the day and the, the outlets hadn't been connected, so I don't think he's done yet. No, he's not, and I, I, I'm not sure what the status or hold up is. But I would say we could hold off until we know where. Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Excellent. Any other issues or concerns? Uh, I don't know if this is the right place for it, but I did want to bring it up uh, I, on our social media. I'm posting. Uh, I, I plan on posting a uh, thing for the pride event that the racial and social justice committee is hosting on the village green on Thursday. Good. Any other issues or concerns? No. Okay. Next up, treasurer report. Rosemary, what's going on? Just got one thing. Mm -hmm. Errors and omissions for the grand list. There's three changes. One for baby catch. Another one for baby catch. She bought a, a lot that was connecting to the place that she owns and it's contiguous. And um, she did not catch it that it's contiguous. Mm -hmm. One lot changed from 42790. The other lot went from 212,400 to 215,200 for a net of 2,800 for that increase. And the other one is Amanda McSweeney and the trailer park. The mobile home bill sale came in, said it was a 1997 trailer, but it actually was a 1977 trailer. And she confirmed that with the owner. So that made a reduction from $22,100 to $6,200. So a minus of $15,900. Is that an owned trail? Yes. So that tax bill goes to her. Yes. Say what? Yes. That tax bill goes, goes to Amanda? Yes. Owned trailer. It's an old, owned trailer. Oh. Unlanded, what they call it, unlanded trailer. What I would call unlanded a net loss. <laughs> well, those mobile homes depreciate every single year. It's yeah, that's huge. why I say a net loss. Pay somebody to take it away. Okay. And so, okay. Yeah. You need a motion to approve those even outs? Yep. I would move to approve the errors and omissions as presented. Motion. Yeah, I'll authorize the chair to sign. Okay. Motion. Motion. The whole board has to sign. Oh, we do. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Do you have any further discussion? I'm going to abstain. Yep. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Right. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, what else you got, Rosemary? And once the um, commercial drive thing is settled, we'll issue an impact bill and credit for last year's on this year's. And we'll have to pay any interest to the Do we know what those are? Okay. <clears throat> so, can we do that as a credit against his this year's yes. tax line? Now? That's what I think. Okay. Um, that's good. Did we close?
was the year? No. Yeah. Well, I just saw a date on that Ross Environmental. So that needs to go for last year. <laughs> Is that it? Did we iron out where we were the paving? Let's go back to that. We had some discussion about paving and which budget paving expenses would fall into and whether or not we could pave um, the paper for the activity that hopefully starts soon. This is the Clay Hill project? Yes. Clay Hill and River Road. Less. Whatever the balance Less. was at, at the end of the year, I mean, it, it, I don't think they had to pay anybody. Yeah. That I put all that into a paving meter to go. Okay. Okay. But we'll know by the next meeting how the books. Yeah. Do you think by the next meeting, you and Brian will be able to get together and give us a proposal for a house? Yes. What to do with the surplus? Mm -hmm. What the surplus is? Do you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. okay. There's quite a bit of surplus. When the surplus is defined, it is from our mind that not to forget about the reserve fund for the heavy equipment because we need to just make sure we're considering that. And we received notice from Jason that they're not making parts for our mower deck anymore. So we're having to fab uh, our own parts for repairs. As soon as one ends, another begins. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. 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 Thanks, Rosemary. Oh, oh, darn it. I do have one other thing for you, but you don't have to answer right now, but maybe next meeting. Um, we got some correspondence about um, tobacco licensing, and I pushed back a little bit about it. Um, got it from Allison at Health New Lamoille. Um, I Is hope I did, tobacco but it's or? about tobacco, it's about cannabis and alcohol. She referenced very specifically tobacco. And that was the thing that really like piqued my interest because it's not something that we talk about, at least not since I've been on the board. And I was a little bit worried about the way she was talking about it. Well, the state is doing a whole new online portal for those kind of events now, which is opened up last week. And we haven't approved tobacco licenses in many, many years. Right. If they have a, a liquor license, they didn't need to get a tobacco license. Uh, but if they just sell tobacco, they have to get one. Okay. And that will still be true? I don't know. Okay. They have to change those things. Okay. Yeah. Because if you don't mind, there are all these licenses that would be great to understand. <laughs> Okay, cool. Thanks, Rosemary. Plan purchases. All right, we have one plan purchase for the next period. Uh, and that is uh, to buy pallets of the hydro seed supply, the lime seed fertilizer. Um, we save a decent amount of money by buying them in bulk. Uh, we just restocked uh, to a limited capacity to meet our current obligations, but we need to restock larger than that. So uh, Public Works would like to spend up to 2,500 on purchasing hydro seed supplies. Which is basically cover a year? <clears throat> it depends on the projects we're doing, but I would estimate it to cover uh, at least one year. I would be very surprised if we ran through the whole thing in a year. Um, I think that our previous supply, last time we bought this quantity, uh, I think it lasted us about two and a half years um, during COVID where we had a little bit reduced uh, usage. Most new approved purchases. Is it something we need to approve? I uh, it's over a thousand dollars, so it goes into bar group. Yep. Second, I'm second for third. 
support for the motion anyway. Um, it's a great motion. Is there anything talking about storage? <laughs> it takes up a decent amount of space in our lower storage building, but we've never had any trouble making the room for it. You know, our, the way we have things arranged, like I said, we, we bought like this before, so we have places to put everything. I mean, it, it does take up a decent amount of space and space is at a premium, uh, but this is something that we currently account for. Okay, fair enough. So we have an active motion. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 What, I, need a, I think I need a tour of that little bit. Looks like our root cellar. We can <laughs> arrange it. Down there? No, I haven't. We should get a tour of all the whole area down there. We did it last year. It was good. You do it again? I would too, actually. It was good. It was good. It was nice to talk to the guys and see all of what happens. Yeah, I don't think it'll be any problem getting them to make time and do that again. Uh, it might be. Well, I'll, I'll work with Jason and yeah. try and set up a time. It's not high on my list of wishes. Okay. It's just a curiosity more than a burning desire. Okay, next up is committee, uh, committees and volunteers. All right. So uh, I want to first get into uh, the recreational facilities grant that the skate park would like to apply for. So, um, Casey, do you want to talk a little bit about the scope or do you want me to? Sure. Okay. I'll, I'll thumbnail it. Sure. That'll be perfect. All right. Okay. So we want to, <clears throat> the biggest construction part, anyway, that this, and that's what this grant is pertinent to. We want to extend the concrete feature with a half, a, a half pipe, basically U shaped. So it's, you know, it's like a, a bowl at the end. And it would be so maybe three to four feet high, depending on the gym that you're looking at. And it would be surrounded by a grass berm. And there are multiple recreational advantages for riders, uh, you know, extending the use of the concrete ramp. Up. Basically, it's a good thing. And it's a, and it's a good improvement for the park. Um, we, this grant wants letters of recommendation. So one thing that we want from the select board is a letter of uh, support, I should say, um, which Brian and I are working on today. Um, the other thing they'd like to know is, um, you know, what what actual supports might people be, what entities like the town be offering for the project. Um, and so basically, I've talked with Jason uh, and Brian about some stuff. But let me back up to the thumbnail of the project. Something I forgot to say is aside from uh, the physical structure, it's also going to be a good basis for programs and coaching. It's be very beginner friendly. So it expands our scope of what we can there. Um, and that's important, but this grant doesn't pertain to that. That would be all that gets funded by other sources. Um, so basically, um, we're able to ask for a little over $15,000. It's, it's a 100% match to match, and that's what we're asking for. Um, it would really help the project a lot if public works can help us with some fill material for the firm. Um, and actually, then Jason said, well, you know, that we could perhaps, with the sample of food, we could, we, you could do hydro seed instead of just like, you know, the regular process of seed and whatever. So uh, what we are asking for from you guys is, um, and this is where uh, Jason and Brian, you know, he'll, he'll kick in. But basically, we, uh, Jason said uh, they've got scavenged ditch material enough to pilot at the park. Um, and for 
you know, went up for the sperm. And in fact, they so anyway, so it's sort of okay. Um, so that having that material on hand, plus trucking and, and moving them in the spring from back in the you know, up to where it's going to be worked on, that that kind of uh, time, uh, plus the hydro suit. Uh, then the question's been raised about um, because uh, you know. The berm is going to have fill material that can take sort of coarser, like fairly big stones at it at the base. But as you get towards the top, um, you know, you don't want more than one and a half inch stones in there because you want to cap compact it and shape it. So the question was raised about using the screener. And basically, sort of, we won't know, I think, until we get there as to whether that is going to be needed. Uh, the contractor did say um, they used that dish material in other, at least in the town of Warren anyway. Uh, so, he, and he's looked at photographs of our dish material and it takes its fun. <coughs> so it's kind of a hypothetical question as to whether the use of this, uh, the screener uh, equipment might be necessary, but we can't answer that right now. It's my conclusion. So yep. I've, now I've asked Brian. Okay. So yeah, um, what you need is a letter of support from the board and general consensus on us providing some support. We wouldn't be doing the majority of the construction work, but we would be doing a little bit of earth moving uh, in order to just make it a little more convenient for the paid contractor to finish the work. <laughs> But our guys wouldn't be out there doing shaping or anything time consuming, but you know, a little bit of a little bit of earthworks. Um, the material that we want to send over there for the project would be the uh, the the fill and material that we're generating with cleaning the ditches that we've been working on this summer. We've got a decent amount of work or a decent amount of fill left over. We didn't have a lot of people asking for it. So we have earth that we can donate to the project. Uh, but they're moving it right now. I literally watch them drive by my house multiple times a day right yeah. now. So where is that going right now? It's going to get dumped somewhere that will have to then be moved again. It's going to our staging area right now. We can uh, start diverting it to the skate park. It'll be convenient for uh, a couple of the projects at least. Uh, and it won't even for the ones it's not, it's less convenient for it's not significantly more out of the way uh, than where we're taking it now. Um, so what do you want from us? A motion. What we need is general support for the grant application and uh, your direction for me to send a letter of support. Is the fifteen thousand dollars in matching funds coming out of the skate park reserve. It would primarily come out of the skate park reserve. Uh, I don't know if any of it's coming out of your operating budget. But. No, we're well, maybe some site material purchases, a little bit here and there, uh, might come out of operating if we find we're short or something uh, to pay for that. But program stuff would all be out of operating. And um, what we're hoping is to um, use up to $8,000 of our 11,000 uh, some plus reserve so. uh, fund towards this. Yes. And then what? And then what? And then what about the remaining? Oh, uh, the grant. The grant would be for 15,000 plus. Um, we have that on hand, which includes the full amount of the reserve fund, because that, that, that just says what we have on hand, and that's the answer. Uh, 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 so, so they're not looking for you to have a, a, an exact match of the grant money. Okay. Oh, from extra from anywhere else? No. More you don't need to come with fifteen thousand dollars. You just need to come with whatever on hand. Okay. Yeah. You're right. We are going for other grants, but we're, we're only talking on hand. So I, you almost confused me more. 
You're I'm asking for $15,000 in this grant, correct? Yes. And the skate park has $15,000 in its reserve that it can use to match if they receive it. Almost. Almost. Where's the remainder coming from? Okay. Is it coming out of your $8,000 yearly has, budget? The skate park has a like and you have an operating budget of like 79 yeah, months, are you? Um, and we want, we want to use only $8,000. We won't know how much we need until we get to spring and, and we find out what we have the grants, etc. Okay, so the skate park is prepared to spend $8,000 of its reserve. Mm -hmm. You're signing up for 15 on a one to one match. Right. Where's the other seven thousand come from? Okay. If you get fifteen, is that coming out of the town's general budget? Yeah. Fundraising. Uh, we, we've got. No, I don't. I don't of course, I don't have that. Can the like can the town's contributions be in in uh, in kind contributions? No, no in kind in this. <laughs> no, we have fundraising. I'm going to call it four thousand dollars roughly, uh, with more to come. We have the eight. That we want to use, and um, we have, and then we've got a little bit more in reserve that we can count, and then they also let you count uh, what bits of dollars, like 500 bucks, that we plan on using from our approved budget, and it it adds up to 15 over five two for most Americans. So essentially, you can cobble it all together with your yes money. Right. And at this point, it's an application. I'm, I, I can read. At this point, it's an application. You you have not got the commitment of the funds yet. Yeah. Okay. I can well, I can support it now, knowing that we're going to cobble together. I'm a little hesitant on fully supporting it car blanche with public works. We already know that they have a lot going on. If they can divert material now for support, I would like to do that. And if they could hydro seed it potentially. Yeah. So he said that if we're going to have public public works support it, and they're already transporting material elsewhere, then we should have them just transport it to the skate park now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yes. That was the plan. Dump it there now. And when it comes time to just move it if needed in the spring. But, then, but their spring is a busy time of year for public works. So right. if they dump a pile over there and they need to go over there and send a guy over there for two days in the spring, that's unrealistic. Sometimes. And I can't, I can't swear that it's going to be spring. It's going to, we can't go ahead until we have enough money. Spring is our target. So you want us to volunteer public works time at a targeted date to be determined. The main thing is, can we have the dirt and they can put it there this fall? Do we not ask them for spring. sculpting the dirt? Yeah, and I, I can't swear that it's going to be spring. Thing. I, you know, I know that I know that's a busy time. That all of those, anything beyond, basically, anything beyond having the dirt piled there now, and then ultimately. Uh, using, you know, once the berm is built, the offer of hydro seal seed uh, is, is great if, if you can offer that as well. It, that would be swell. That would be great support. What happens if the grant doesn't come through? Will you still have a use for? Are we piling a bunch of dirt down there? Point. Uh, no, <laughs> that we're gonna have to go yeah, and pick yeah. up. Uh, yes, yes, that's that's a very good question. We, um, <coughs> um, we're gonna work till we can get the thing built. I mean, we're really committed to it. So that's all. That's just and it's just a pile of dirt. So. I know, right? Like, there's nothing better than being to climb that pile of dirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which costs a lot of money. <laughs> but, but we're just dumping it. I'll make a motion. I motion uh, that does the chair of the whole board have to sign this letter of support? Or can I just have Brian do it? If, you, Brian, if you've been working with Brian? Yeah, yeah, I can do it. I motion for Brian to sign the letter of support from the town that he's been working on with Casey and to conceptually 
have public works provide material pending grant approval? Well, we no, want, it we doesn't want work that way. That's, I, I understand. I, well, Casey, I, mean, I, 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 I made a motion. I mean, I know that's, 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 that's wrong, what I just said. You can do whatever you want. Thank you. <laughs> um, I guess the gamble, we're, the, the gamble it, from your point of view, is that we're asking you to have a pile of dirt there that might not get used until it, it might not get used in the spring. We might have to move it again. Get, okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Bear in mind, we ditch every summer, so it's not a big deal. Okay, do we have a So your, mo your motion was? Public works to deliver pending. material pending grant approval. approval. Which might not happen until next year. Which will still be ditching. But then it's, next then year. we can't say it's support that we're giving if it's pending that's, grant approval. That's, that's support. Yeah, but wait, we're not talking about it anymore. I'm asking if there's a second. Not anyone. Apparently not. Okay, motion dies. Anyone else like to make a motion? Are you about to make a motion, Doctor? You want me to make Go ahead and make a motion. Yeah, I was uh, still thinking about it. Trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. I make a motion that Brian uh, sign a letter of approval. Support. Support. For the skate park coming to pursue this grant, and uh, does that also need to have in it that public works deliver material to the site? If you wanted to be, if you wanted something more vague, you could say that you incorrect you want public works to support the project, and then we can work out what's convenient for Jason. Well, wait a second, that's mm -hmm. very Mark vague. should make the that's, kind of that's, too, motion. that's too broad. Yeah. Yep. That's just um. Make make a motion that um, Brian sign a letter showing support for the skate park grant prop, and that um, he and Casey um, work on the details of public works delivering material. And they get delivering material. Yes. Okay, delivering material. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? <laughs> and we have a second. Okay. Do we have any further discussion? I, I didn't quite hear the entire motion about that it would include delivering donating material. material. Delivering it's material. letter of support and delivering material. Yeah. It, I, That's I, all I, you're I, All I want to say is that if they want to know what specific supports can be provided as part of the application. Well, there you go. Now yeah. you know. Now yeah. you know. <laughs> So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you okay. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Aye. Thank you. All right. Next up. Thank you for working on that, Casey. Excuse me. Good luck with the grant. Oh, yeah. Janet's so Cross Community yeah. Development Block Grant. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, there's been an update to the grant agreement. Uh, sorry, we don't know. It's not the final for it. No. Um, there's been an update to the grant, the community development block grant, grant agreement with uh, the state and Jenna's promise. It is going to require us to re-sign um, some of the documents that we've signed as support for working with Jenna's promise before. Uh, what does the update entail? The update is a change from, I'm sorry, I don't have this. The it, It's a change from uh, Jenna's from Jenna's house to Jenna's promise, I believe it is the change, but it's so the change is the name of the organization no. within the same name. organization, one part of the organization to another, but it's still working with Jenna's promise and it's still the so nothing with funds is being done different. No, a, the, the amount is the same, the timeline is the same, scope of work is the same. Uh, it's a, a change in the name of. One of the entities. 
It's kind good. of like an amendment. It's going in as an amendment. All right. Motion authorized Brian to sign amended Jenna's promise I think community. Sign it, or I should sign it, President Brian. I think the board signed it last time. Yeah, the board didn't sign it last time. Yeah, like, the board the board 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 didn't well, you can authorize Beth to sign it, and Beth can come in and sign it with me, or or I can bring it to the next meeting, whatever your preference. Bring it to the next meeting, that's fine. No biggie. Fair enough. We got the update. What? Would you like to sign it? No, I don't care, but uh, is that motion? Like, you started the motion? The motion right died. Now? It will never <laughs> finish. Fine, okay. Anyone else want to take make a motion? You could, but we can wait for the next one. Okay. Is there any implication of waiting? I don't believe so. There's a couple of things that we need to do sooner rather than later, but I don't believe any of those require board signature. Um, there's a couple of things that I need to do administratively uh, to accept the amendment but that doesn't require board approval. It's just an acknowledgement that the change is made. So I think we're okay. Um, you know, I will, I'll, I'll move on that with, with the board's director. Okay. Okay, unification committee appointments. All right. So we have received The uh, Lauren Philly has expressed an interest in volunteering to serve on the Johnson Beautification Committee and uh, the Johnson Beautif Beautification Committee recommends her appointment. Okay. Do you need a motion? A motion that we accept Lauren Philly's application or appointment to the beautification. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Second. All those in favor? Hi. Ayes have it. Congratulations, Lauren and the Beautification Committee. Is that a result of someone leaving? Yes. Um, yeah. There was a vacancy. Uh, was it? We've already extended the base. We did. Yeah. We just didn't have anyone volunteering on that. Did we send out a thank you letter to the prior person? If we didn't, we should. We should be sending a lot of thank you letters out then. A lot of thank you letters. A lot of committees. There's quite a few, but. Um, okay. That's me, a good one to remember. Uh, I agree. And let me just make a note. Yeah. And maybe we can have a Lydia help us with that. Nobody disagrees. But I believe you both voted for. Good about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, next. Uh, thank you. Trent uh, McCarver has volunteered to serve on the uh, Johnson Oven Committee, and uh, the Oven Committee supports their appointment. And there's a vacancy there as well. I, I have not received notice of anybody resigning from the committee, um, so I'm not. I don't know if anybody's resigning or if they are expanding. Expanding. They may not have a set number of seats. Right. I don't believe that we dictated to them how many seats they had. I think that we just uh, appointed the people when we started. Move to appoint. I think I'm on that committee. I'm on that. <laughs> well, if anyone should know, it should be. It should be. It should be me, but you know, I don't recall you ever appointing me to that. I don't know. Uh, but I've been on the, the email list and I've been voting, so, so I'm. So we have a motion. I, I I move to appoint. Okay, do you have a second? Appoint is the correct word, Mark. Second. <laughs> second. <laughs> motion and second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Perfect. Thank you. Well done. We got in under the wire, kid. Right. Next up is Raven. Uh, Raven has. Uh, submitted for resignation from the uh, Racial Justice and Social Equity Committee. You got that right? Um, she's moved and can no longer serve on the committee. Move to accept the resignation 
and request a thank you letter be signed for their service. Beautiful. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone else? Aye. <laughs> uh, I thought that it wasn't going to vote. Okay. Well, we won't let it quit. All right. So next up, uh, the economic development services. A uh, brief update on that. Uh, we've received a few applications. Uh, when we when we're putting this on the agenda. Uh, we had not received any at the time, uh, and we received several uh, Thursday night and early on Friday. Um, so we, we've we've now received <clears throat> several proposals for this. Uh, we've also started getting some interest on Indeed. Um, processing it through Indeed is a little different, uh, and it makes it more difficult for the process through Indeed, formatting wise, is going to be a little bit funny for how to integrate it with like reviewing regular bids. But since we were interested in having this be either a job or a uh, contract, I think it'll work out okay. But it'll, it'll be a little bit different when we go review it. Uh, Indeed, it's always yeah. What did we set? Did, did we set a timeline for submissions? Uh, we had some. We had a, a timeline for it. I uh, notified Beth that I was going to take the timeline off for a couple of repostings on uh, some more sites to try and generate more interest when we weren't when it looked like we weren't receiving any interest. Uh, but then we received, like I said, we received quite a bit, kind of a down to the wire. Uh, not a lot, but three, but better than zero. zero. Anybody from the area? Or can you just say that? Northeast Kingdom, St. Albans, Tennant, somebody else. So is it potentially still, is it listed now as open until filled or? It is. Um, we just created a LinkedIn account. By the way, there's a Johnson LinkedIn account, folks. So anyone who would like to fill in and share, please do. Um, so I just wanted to throw that plug in real quick. <laughs> it was posted there too. Uh, Lisa, you wanted to add something? Is the um, designations uh, kind of the same as the design conversion kit, or does it do that throughout the follow up together? Okay, hold that, but we'll circle back to it. Okay. okay. Um, thank you, though. Okay. Um, so on economic development, um, we'll maybe add this to, we'll add it, we'll definitely, we'll add it to one of the next two meetings, hopefully next meeting. Cause I think we should get those in front of us and start the process. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, they pretty rapidly, thankfully changed from uh, kind of the character of what we were looking at. Do you think Indeed helped us find it to more people? Or? Indeed definitely did in this case. We got, I don't, our experience with Indeed in the past has not, has been that it didn't really pan out, but it definitely got in front of more people than it would have otherwise. Indeed is really not set up for RFPs. It's set up for point. jobs, yeah. but, um, yeah, we definitely saw more interest in this. Indeed, it's also easier to track than, you know, when we posted on, uh, you know, the Vermont League, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns website, their classifieds. I'm a pretty big believer in, uh, in terms of local contractors kind of keeping an eye on that. But we have no data on. If anybody keeps an eye. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need to get any data or any feedback on that, how many people see it, how many people read the details. We don't know. Indeed sends us lots of data about who's reading. I think it's very healthy to expand our horizons and not get stuck in narrow thinking. Yeah. I agree. And the story part was 90 bucks. Okay. Um, so we'll revisit this later. Thanks for that update. 
let's circle back to, to um, sorry, is there anything else that anyone wants to add on that? I feel like it's quite too long. If my request would be if we get that as an agenda item, as an action item or agenda item, that we receive copies, some sort of synopsis yes. of yep. you know, well in advance so we can do our homework. Yep. Okay. Um, Kyle Senesak and Rex Sinead resign summer. Okay. Anything else to add there, Lisa? No, I just we can accept it. Let's do it. Yeah. Motion to accept Kyle Senesak's resignation from the rec committee and send a thank you letter. It's been sent. Oh, good job. Way to go, Lisa. I'm going to take that right off the motion. It's, it's <laughs> already been done, did you say? It's been sent. Oh. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to a second. Second. In favor? Me. Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, we so do we need to post? There kind of was this blanket posting this last week, but probably should just post formally again. I would suggest that we do uh, another front porch forum. That we do another. I don't think we've had. Lois, correct me if I'm wrong. Has there been uh, any interest on the historical society boards? Two, two trustee openings. Two trustee openings. Can we, can we add that to the posting and any other? vacancies that might be out there. And I would suggest doing it multiple times. You know, one, one time doesn't seem to do the trick. You know, what does the trick is people talking. It's rare that a posting does a trick. It's usually you're talking to somebody about something they care about. I agree. You should socialize. Yeah, uh, once it's real. Uh, it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, OK. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll post. I've got vacancies for the racial justice and social equity, historical society, and recreation. And any other ones? I'll check with planning. I don't remember if they're down somebody or, or not, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Paul. Um. All right. Speaking of Paul. Next up, uh, reviewing survey results from the uh, American Rescue Plan Act survey. I apologize. That was not my intent on this line item, and I didn't correct it. My intent is an update and approach to the ARPA okay. results, not to review them in detail. I did want to include them, but I, didn't want, I don't want to go through and review them tonight. Um, I have been talking to Paul, and um, I asked if he'd be interested in planning commission coming to one of our meetings virtually and having joint, warm, jointly warned um, planning commission and select board meeting at our next select board meeting. Actually, on the nineteenth, we'll spend a good chunk of time actually talking about ARPA approach to ARPA, potentially getting a little a little driving committee, a task force is what I want to call it, not a sub, as opposed to a subcommittee. <laughs> not a committee for a sake of a committee, it's really somebody to keep us driving us forward. Um, but anyway, I talked to Paul about his appetite for something like that, and he was very interested and open to it, and I wanted to get your take on it too, so if anyone else is interested in doing so. I certainly would like to hear, being a new person, I don't, Really not familiar with the planning commission is looking at other than possible votes, I guess. So it would be nice to have them. I mean, this is long term plan. Yep, which is what they're about to kick off again. They're required by statute to have long term town plans and mm -hmm. they're working on kicking it off now, for what I understand. So I think the timing is good timing too. So I'm supportive of having a visit, having them come in. That? I do. The only caveat I would have is one that I've said numerous times that um, at the end of the day, the way the process is set up, the final decision determination 
is the select boards. So I guess I, you know, I don't want to set up expectations in looking at the survey. There's everything but, you know, the kitchen <coughs> sink in here in terms of how to spend the funds. Um, so at some point, we're going to have to fish and cut bait and make a decision as to what to spend, spend for. But it would be nice to have a lot of input. Yeah. Um, we had it clear. Yeah. We can talk about input or basis flow. I, I kind of agree with Duncan. We can meet with them, but at the end of the day, the expectation needs to be set before. At the meeting? Sure. At the meeting. Yeah. Um, that's totally fine if it's an expectation at the meeting. I think we need to have a solid plan for whittling down the list. And I'd like to take a crack at that before our next meeting. So I have sent the survey results to Paul and the Commission too. Um, so they have an electronic file. And I think that uh, I'm probably going to propose that we all spend a little bit of time valuing these things against each other um, so we can whittle it down in our next meeting. And I'm probably going to ask them if they can do this. Soon. They have a meeting on Thursday. You do have to admit, some of them are funny. Well, some I'm of... not talking about the content of the results yet. Oh, I was talking about them. They're a public document. You can devalue those like in your evaluation. I don't I know. Found your um, putting collating them and putting them in that spreadsheet was really useful for viewing. Thank you. So much. This well, spreadsheet? Uh, this one? Um, in the back. The one that best sent out. You yeah, sent it yeah. Oh, you sent it out at five. It's the contents here. Yeah. And there's there's the original too. So the other side of that, well, maybe it's cleaned off now, but the whiteboard activity is on one tab and then this is on the other. Yep. Um, so anyway, okay, good. So I'll tell Paul that they're certainly invited. I'll talk to him a little bit about expectation that I sent them in before they're meeting Thursday. And we'll plan to have a good chunk of time in our next meeting devoted um, to your approach to our four results and what the planning commission is thinking too. I think we should take your input, particularly since you're planning. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you. And uh, moving on, our next item is the uh, just a presentation of the of our last uh, fire department service contract. Um, we had talked a little bit while we were assigning it about some wish list items that people might like to see. Um, so this is more to kind of get you thinking about it again uh, so that we have, you know, if we can submit requests to the village in October, uh, maybe at our joint meeting in October, um, you know, we can, we might be able to get some changes made if we're we're trying to submit them at the last minute. Uh, you know, they're they're not likely to be taken up. But that's it. Just Didn't you have trying to get it out in front of you again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we can get into a rhythm of getting these contracts in front of us well in advance of when we design them, so that we don't end up. Either not able to make changes or trying to force something through at the last minute. The renewal date, I know that was a question that we talked about. Yes. If we could have a, if the village would be accepting to a, a bumper a quarter to or a bumper a half because they're on a calendar year and we're on a fiscal year. So we end up carrying costs for six months sometimes that we can. Yeah, properly budgeted for is, is the tough thing. Yep. Um, we do pay over half their budget, so I feel like that's a reasonable ask and the entertainment of it. You know, I, I think they they could be. Um, and yeah, I think that if we make a proposal, it's more likely, if we make a proposal, it's more likely to be taken 
up and taken seriously, especially if we can make it in like October uh, for a specific request, it's more likely to be successful. Uh, they've also got a new person incoming um, As a for that. Yeah. So um, it's, there's kind of nobody to review it for another month. So we, we've got not an abundance of time, but. Well, I mean, conceptually, they have plenty of time. They'd have two months to talk about having. Yep. Getting it where their budget was received by us by October and then their new billing cycle was January or July 1. That way we could budget properly for the expense. Costs. Do, Evan, do we, um, you said this is more than half their budget. Do we look at their whole budget? No. No. We're not, the, the trustees are responsible. Right, they're budget. responsible. But it would but, be interesting to know what the breakout. I mean, the, they they contract with Waterville, Waterville, Belvedere, and the town of Johnson. Um, and those three contracts make up a significant portion of the total fire department budget. And like you said, it's I think what we're paying alone is more than more than the village. I wasn't even getting into their budget because we, we don't really have say over their budget. Well, but we, but you're asking us me to agree to ninety five thousand dollars without knowing what. I agree. It's a it just the seems sheriff's like, department. Yeah, yeah. It just seems like, I mean, I don't have say over yes or no on their budget, but we have say over is ninety five thousand dollars. And we don't have say over we just always pass it and the way it goes. I mean, if we think about it as a contracted service, though, we have a whole lot of contractors that we don't know what their budgets are. That's true. We just go yay yeah, or nay. Right. Yeah, they're, they're, they're closer to us, but we don't have their contractor. We don't have any more control over them than we do anybody else. Um, we can ask them for yeah, a presentation, no, but. I'm just trying to get a lay of the land here. Their yep. budget's part of the village report. Uh, yeah, I understand that. I just, I don't know. Okay. Here. Um, thanks, Brian, for adding this. We'll pick it up again. If anyone has feedback, let's send it to me. Don't send it to Brian, just me. I'll compile. We'll get changes made for the next time we pick this up, um, which will likely be to your point in October at some point. So just to be clear, are we talking about reviewing the actual contract or the dollar amount? Uh, whichever you'd like, if you have feedback on the contract we will uh, sign, which will include the amount as well as the content of the contract, then like, just give it. Um, we don't know what the amount's gonna be. We haven't heard from them yet. Right. Yeah, this is last year's contract, mm -hmm. this is it. The other thing with last year, and I can't speak for prior years, but last year the contract came really late, like it came in after, <laughs> I feel like after we were supposed to have signed there or something. It was really late anyway. Um, and we didn't really have any time to consider the dollar amount at all. So well, I think this year we just need to ask for that to be contract. Isn't that part of, because they follow a calendar year but our budget's not approved until March, so we can't sign the contract. That's part of something weird there. There is there is some difficulty in them giving us a dollar amount early in the year because that's not really where they're at in their budgeting cycle. You know, they don't really know what their expenses are going to be when we would like to sign. And when they'd like us to sign it, unfortunately. So it's feedback we can give them again that we'd like it sooner. I think we should get some tight dates because we're talking very abstractly. I think we should look back at last year and see what actually what happened. Yeah, they're, they're actually, their budget 
is done in December. Ours is done in June. So they should be able to do some estimating. I think that's fair feedback to get. I think we beat this right. Yep, we'll talk about it again. Let's get right. a timeline in the meantime, Brian. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so next up, uh, we received a request uh, or a suggestion about uh, hiring a landscaper or kind of a maintenance employee to assist on uh, I'd call it, I mean, landscaping is kind of the best name for it, but I think in general, uh, support for our, uh, our parks and public buildings. Basically, we have beautification members volunteering a lot of hours over the summer to keep gardens and things clean yep. for multiple entities around town. Yes, and a decent amount of volunteer time from office employees also doing the same. Uh, and I especially want to acknowledge uh, Marla Emery for volunteering quite a bit of her time on the gardens right up here. Seems like something that ought to be shared with the village. If you get out of I think that it probably would be a lot of the public grounds that we talk about are things like the village welcome signs, the, uh, we call it the cold spring. Yes. Just the cold spring, yeah. yeah. Uh, the cold spring, we did some work on the village green, this building, a lot of shared or village properties uh, would be likely to be included in this person's duties if there was such a position, so. Yeah, I think it would be something that we would. I don't know that it would be a shared employee or if it would be a uh, employee that is employed by one entity and uh, we request a donation from the other or how we manage it. So, is this something where we should talk about during the budget season as a potential shared? I mean, a, a I'm guessing it would be something on the order of a part time seasonal employee. The other thing we could consider is um, grant opportunities. Um, if we'd be willing to put the effort into the grant opportunities, then. or contracted services. Don't give us mentioning a part time seasonal employee. Uh, all those things would be could be discussed at budget season if we budgeted an allotment for contracted services. Potential. I don't think we have the money in the budget to do the extent of another employee, even if it's seasonal part time. But I don't know how many hours have been requested. It would be interesting if uh, some of the other suggestions of other governmental bodies or local Johnson based organizations generally. Uh, and by organizations, I mean municipalities and the school systems and nonprofits and businesses, whomever. I, just wonder if there is some way that we could have like community funding if one of those entities would be willing to help with current funding. I don't know, just throwing ideas. Okay. Yeah, that, that was an idea in the proposal that I sent on behalf of the interceptors. There's a lot, you know, there's. Kyle, can you scoot up? Yeah, actually, sorry, I was thinking about people at home. We don't have the, the audience mic is still up for repair. So if you guys actually come a little bit closer to this microphone, it would probably help. 
viewers at home quite a bit. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, so when we were, you know, we've done an entire inventory of all the public spaces, public and private spaces that we think could um, be beautified and make a, you know, a really nice presentation for the town and village when people are, for people that are living here, for people that are um, traveling through, for people that are potentially wanting to move here, students, employees, employers, and um, so we were trying to think outside the box so that this doesn't necessarily land just in one person's or one municipality's budget, but could be shared with multiple stakeholders that have prime real estate on Main Street, for example, and even down Railroad Street. So I think if we could get creative and all get around a table and talk about it, that maybe we could all contribute to a shared landscaper with gardener helpers. And the way that most municipalities do it is that they hire somebody full-time May through October with one or two assistants. And so it is a seasonal position. And I've done a bunch of homework with calling other municipalities and getting their spreadsheets and budgets. And you know, there's the whole gamut. There's like what Cambridge does, which is a little bit just a few things, you know, hanging baskets and a few things on the ground when you go through the village of Cambridge. And then there's, so that's sort of a simplified version. And then there's like Newport and St. Albans, which are of course bigger towns, but they have just gorgeous, gorgeous flower displays everywhere. So they're sort of the higher <laughs> end of that spectrum. And I think Johnson could land somewhere in the middle of that, but I think it's just a great, I think it's nice for everybody. And I think it is economic development. That should be considered. Yeah, I was trying to kind of gain a little momentum with that email that I did send out to everybody. Um, nobody responded. <laughs> so it's hard. It's hard. But I would definitely, if I felt like I had the support of the select board, I would definitely continue to to try to get people around a table. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, I, people notice the, the improvements and the changes. It's been, we've received really amazing feedback, but it's not sustainable for us just to do it as a volunteer committee. It's, you know, you know your own gardens, it takes hours <laughs> every week and we're talking a lot of hours. And um, so, Good idea for us to have a sense of how many hours a week are getting spent. Person hours. Yes. All the bridge. All yes. yes. In the in the flower boxes, we can manage. I mean, that is every day too. I mean, I I water Railroad Street. Another volunteer waters Powerhouse. We do that every day. But yes, and we hired Peter years ago, and he's a wonderful gardener, but he was just stretched too thin already, so then it really didn't happen, so that's why a dedicated person that's not just trying to squeeze it into their schedule, sort of like we are, but it's really like you do Johnson, <laughs> and you do it May through October, and um, but I can certainly get hours and in the inventory of all the of all the gardens that we've been trying to maintain this summer. The cold spring is a huge one. It's a beast to tame. We've done massive weedings out. I think we've done three this summer that have taken hours and equipment. And we're gonna do another one before winter. Um, but people notice it. I've seen people sitting on those benches that have never sat on those benches before because it feels welcoming. It doesn't feel scary anymore. <laughs> it, so it, it does make a huge difference in, in the feel of the town, in the sense of welcoming and aesthetic. So that's, that's it. I just wanted to plant the seed because I know budget season is coming and I know that we're not going to be able to do what we did this year next year. Planting a seed. Is Planting a seed and hopefully it'll bloom because you know blooms are beautiful. We'll be able to do this year what we did last year. What do you mean by I'm, that? 
we're not going to do what we've done this year uh, next year sorry so i don't know if i reverse that but specifically speaking you're just looking for the temperature of the board on hiring an employee well i uh, Trying to get you or answer. to continue the conversation, I guess. So I know that might have to go in front of town meeting. Yeah. yeah, but for her to get numbers for us for budget season, she needs to know which way smart. we're comfortable with, right? I think it's a smart idea for you to get information so that you can backtrack your Oh, I have it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll be good for us to see for sure. And I think before budget season is the appropriate time to bring in. Uh, yeah. I don't have to have this for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Frank, we just got a chair that is not an audience chair. Yeah, this is very quick. Okay. Um, Something that it's, it's not really a beautification topic, but it's it's more related to that, which is tree work. Uh, I, by coincidence, I was just talking to uh, somebody on the tree board, and their swamps, their little, you know, the park has some tree work that needs to be done, and we're figuring out how to do it. But, you know, they said uh, that the tree, tree board is over, overwhelmed. Can't, can't keep up with the stuff that they want to do. And it just it occurred to me that um, maybe the different committees that have anything to do with land agents, if we, if we just sort of pool our information about what is needed, there's, there's probably more need out there than any one board is aware of. So I'm just saying tree work is part of it. Lisa, did you have something? Uh, I just, I guess I'm seconding Casey's stuff. I had to come to Brian before with this because the recreation coordinator position ended up being like a parks and rec coordinator. And um, so there's a lot of tree work and um, at Alexander Wilson Center, field maintenance, um, different things that go on there that get put on the back burner just because Jason and his crew are so busy. And so um, I, I think, and I don't mean to take away from what the landscaper side of it, some sort of part time with public works that's doing public garbage, the dog waste bags, uh, tree trimming, weed whacking, gardening, all that stuff. And then I, I just see that as like a feeder system for like having really strong public works employees. So they get into it when they're like younger summer job, moving up forward. Um, I would have to agree with everything that was just said. Uh, I would not agree that the tree board is overwhelmed, but we have put in um, 24 new plants this year, and we're about to do at least 10 more. The bigger the arboretum gets, the more work it is. And we have done an amazing amount of work with six people. But um, in the future, it would be overwhelming. So it's something to keep in mind. And I agree with everything you said about uh, first impressions when you come into the uh, town. The more flowers, the more greenery, the better it is. Thank you. Lois, do you want to add? <laughs> Was the Conservation <laughs> Commission, are they interested as Talk well? Talk about the Rose Bush of the Historical Society. Right. Uh, the Historical Society needs a part time. Yes, we want to get flowers on them. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for really giving the answer. So, to see that. I think, yeah. I, I would just echo what Mark said. I think I think it's a, an important discussion as as an individual member. If we're talking about a significant dollar figure, personally, I'd be a lot more comfortable asking the voters to approve that. Oh yeah. As an article, rather than rolling it into our budget, um, so that the you know the taxpayers could have a discussion about the. You know about you know 
from my perspective, that's, but I think it's important stuff and um, we should think about it. Mm -hmm. The thing that is running through my mind as everyone is talking is, I agree with you, Sue, as things get bigger, more needs to be maintained. And I'm just wondering, there are a number of groups, whether they be formal committees or informal volunteers, who do play a role in all of these pieces right now. And I wonder if it would be prudent to have a long-term plan, management plan to support this. Because if we don't have a long-term plan, we're just gonna keep throwing more and more money at more and more things. And that doesn't feel right to like plan for maintenance. And if there's growth, a plan for growth and what that maintenance looks like, along with the growth plan seems appropriate. And then maybe something like an article at town meeting, you know, there's something to back it. Um, this is what the long-term planning looks like around these things, so. Yeah, I think we would in essence have to either do it as a contract service, as Evan said, or a seasonal part-time employee. I said that was an option. I, I know. I know. But either way, but either still way, you're talking about maintenance and growth. You're still talking about, and you know, my suspicion is that person, if the person gets hired, there would still be a great need for volunteers and sure. coordinating all those volunteers of all those disparate groups that you're talking about would be part of what you know would be needed to be. Yeah, you know, we almost need a job description. Of, well, I think we need know. a plan. I don't think we need a job description. I think we need a plan for what it looks like. What it looks like in three years, what it looks like in 10 years. Um, because until we have a plan, how, like, I get that you're just throwing hours. I really do understand that it's a lot of hours to maintain flower beds. There's no doubt about it. That's why I don't do it. <laughs> but there's no doubt about it. Yeah. But like the more flowers we have, the more beautiful it is. Absolutely love flowers. But how are we going to keep this sustainable? Yeah. And I'm anti <laughs> You are not. <laughs> and I still, I mean, we still love, you know, having our, like in the spring, we did a community clean out the garden day and that was wonderful. I mean, I think it's still really important to have the community get their hands involved and feel like they're part of their community that way. So I would, you know, d theoretically, move, you know, if we do hire a part-time gardener or landscaper, I still think as a committee, we would still love to do days like that and keep, you know, and keep people involved and in obviously we still be involved, but it's the, it's the, you know, I mean, it is a job. It is yep. a job. There will never be a shortage of volunteering. But, no. Well, Beth put it very well. Uh, if there was a long-term projected plan, mm -hmm. maybe the growth would have been kept under control at a maintainable level um something of that effect or it would have been planned two or three years in advance to start figuring this out the arboretum stuck with me too that's kind of what i was thinking about because as it gets bigger more maintenance well all we're gonna do is throw money at it but if there was a plan for it it could be laid out so that there's less maintenance or something of that matter yeah. or maybe kept it a size that's appropriate for the maintenance that we do yeah, well, the beautification, can, you know, for us, it's been, these beds have already existed well before our committee existed. We're just trying to bring them back to a nice place, you know, so that's what, that was our big push this year was just to get these spaces nice again that already existed. Yeah. So, and we would love to continue to do that with, with some hired help. So, um, so would what would you like me to come back with the numbers? If you, in terms if you of what know I, what the hours are that yeah. folks have spent this summer, that would be good. That's a good first step. Okay. And I think a second step would be, what does this look like? Mm -hmm. What does it look like with maintenance without growth mm -hmm. over the next few years? Mm -hmm. um, and then what would it look like with growth? And I think it would be worth connecting with other interested parties. So rec, it's not like Casey's nodding her head. She has mm -hmm. some ideas too. And Sue and the three board, mm -hmm. um, but getting yeah. feedback from those yeah. other folks too. Okay. Yeah. 
Sounds good. Yeah, it's hard. We cross boundaries because we do some of the village. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And we do the school too, all of a sudden. <laughs> it seems like all of so. the work is in the village for the beautification of it. In the uh, actual village limits. Yes, but not all, all not all of it is not all village owned. properties. It's just right. all the right. Village but about half the vast of majority it is, of it has grown. But half of it has become village property. So it's you know, the thing is is that in a village you can't people don't you know, you can't just say, well, not with a village to look nice. I <laughs> just like one swath. That's the hard part. Thank you, Carla. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thank I'm you. I'm going to share back with you. Uh, <laughs> we don't have enough. Susan, do you want to add something? <laughs> one thing I did, for some of you to keep in mind, what's most important is that our brain part is that our brain is going to be one of the as it grows and gets bigger, it now has no investigation in the front now. It's already on the way. We've got a lot of people from our town show up here and give us feedback. In fact, tomorrow we have the community uh, forestry group on Tuesday. It's pulling up the community meeting each process because we need to do so. Which made me all the more thrilled that um, one of the one was uh, ran over one of the public shorts. Yes, I did. Yeah, and they picked three fences, so now it's day one. Well, come on, I have to go. You should have come to the village. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but it is something to keep in mind. I, I don't agree that it's just throwing money at it. Um, the plan is for the algorithm is that it will go outward. But it will not go more than three acres because that's all we got. Yeah. Oh, it's being that right. Never <laughs> say never. Uh, okay, fair enough. I had some other brilliant, sweeting thought, but it's gone. Now. Well, Beth, I had a thought that didn't come up at all. Please. Um, when we're talking about having groups get together and talk about some of the needs, I think probably we haven't gone to work to be a part of it because the private sector. Yeah, okay. and, and work with groups. Excellent. Okay. Cool. Thank you all. Adopt a flower plant. Adopt, Adopt a flower. I like it. I also think it, this is idle thought, but the university has. All the equipment and staff and everything we want out of this they might working closely with the university might be a good idea for this position if it is a position yeah right i should say as a as a solution a for a role as yeah. a role in this uh that's an interesting idea i wonder if they have things like botanical or they must environmental all those kinds of things be beneficial yeah well yeah we might be able to work in students i, I was really thinking of their just their employees mm -hmm. uh, that do similar work but they're contained to the campus right now they used to contribute money to the town for the town to employ uh, economic development specialist what if we could reverse that and contribute some money to them to employ an additional landscaper and then increase their scope. But I, I don't thought we have no. Let's do really quick. We gotta move on. Yeah. I was just thinking that you might find somebody who would be interested in that in the Harley Quinn Club. Um, there are botanical people in the Who is that? The Harley Quinn Club of Northern Party plant club. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Uh, next up, Hugh Albright, plea deal and victim impact. So, uh, Hugh's case is continuing. Um, he has an upcoming court appearance to change his plea. Uh, that is likely to be his last court appearance. So if there is a 
victim impact statement or if we want a town representative to be present, um, this is our likely to be our last opportunity. So far, the board has declined, but. Well, historically, the board has declined. Yeah. Not so far. We haven't talked about this topic. Yes, but. that's correct. This is not a, this is, has not been discussed. So just with this one, we just have to be a little tiny bit careful. We don't have to be careful for the most part, but there are some things that there are specifics we want to get into. We should go into executive session. I don't imagine there are, um, but. So question is, um, do we want to make a statement? Maybe, maybe this treads on the area that you're discussing, but you you reference it as a change of plea. Do we know what the change of plea is? Yeah, it was it was um, just to be clear, the thing that I think the only area I think we could go into executive session on is about um, attorney client privilege discussions. I don't think there are other reasons we could go into executive session. I did a little bit of homework on this one, Brian, and I chatted about it. Yeah. I, I'd just like to get the temperature of the board. Do we want to be a part of it? I don't see what value it would bring. Um, I tried that on the last talk, but <laughs> trying to get the temperature of the board. He's still busy, so that's right. The town was, I, I, you know, I wasn't involved. Maybe so, either. yeah. So I don't know if the town was fully compensated for. For the most part. I don't think we got money back for our lawyer's fees. No, we did not. And this doesn't help me with what the change this just is what he agreed to it doesn't help me with what his change of plea change of is. Plea was going to be guilty yeah he's changing from not guilty to guilty oh okay i i, I don't have a dog in this fight so okay i i mean personally uh i don't you would benefit from having a statement. The one thing you could in theory do is influence some decision that was going to happen, but I don't have a preference to do that personally. Do you? It's a non violent crime. Having a statement will do nothing. Yeah. Okay. So the worst, back, move on. the worst case that could happen is he, this, this is a plea agreement. So it's really the court would. More than likely, accept the plea agreement. Well, it's that's a, the it's expectation. Well, he's, you know, we are, we're not attorneys, we're not privy to anything in this. The expectation is that he will be changing his plea to accept a plea deal. The plea deal has to be approved by the judge. The worst case is the judge could say, oh, this there is, is too harsh. Our, there is something in our email. There was something about. Um, yeah, it was going to be time. If there's going to be more money for fees. It's like $875. Yeah. It wasn't crazy high. And 150 hours of community service. We could get a gardener. <laughs> <laughs> too soon? <laughs> 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 yeah. Beth, I, just, Beth, I think I, Beth, I think that's the email you're looking for. I am I'm peaceful. Do you need a resolution, Beth? I'm peaceful with just like Sleeping dogs lie. Yeah. yeah. If we take no Let's action, let the then court do its job. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think we have consensus. I think we have. Totally cool. I think we have a temperature. Are you content with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Really fine. He doesn't look content, but he's nodding his head. So we're gonna move on. Yeah. Okay. As Mark would say, informal survey. All right. <laughs> so next up, uh, Beth has a report from a oh, yeah. uh, recent meeting with the sheriff's department and the other town representatives. I don't actually have a have a written report because I haven't got the slide deck yet. But I did meet with the sheriff's department uh, and our 
here were towns that contracted with Sheriff's Department a couple of weeks ago. And ultimately, the discussion was very much about arrest rate. I was actually hoping I would get the slide deck before tonight because I wanted to share some information on arrest, arrest numbers, very specifically arrests. In Johnson, um, they're pretty significantly increased over uh, year to date from what they had been prior in prior years. Um, the challenge I have with that personally is that that seemingly really high trend line going up um, for arrest rate in Johnson um, was all during COVID years. So that bothers me a little bit. I would like to see it compared to 2019, but when I do get those numbers, I will share them with you. The other thing that came up um, was the uh, retirement for the state. Retirement costs are going up pretty significantly, about 12 percent. Um, and that's not this is not just the plan that the sheriff covers on. It's also the other plans as well. Um, and then lastly, that health insurance is expected to be around 11. So basically some pretty heavy hitters in terms of costs um, for the sheriff's department specifically. Um, and then we talked about some major incidents that occur. So when that, those slide decks do, uh, when the slide deck is available, I will share it well, publicly and within the board. Um, we can just push it out through distribution list just as an FYI. Um, but I just wanted to give an update on those, those discussions. We do have another meeting coming up on the 29th, I believe if that's a Thursday. Um, we'll have some follow-up discussion, but it's basically the um, starting stages of um, contract fees and expected uh, increases for the next fiscal year. Essentially. Substantial increases, it sounds like. Are they talking? Well, it could be. The Roger was talking about um, the costs that he did expect that we would. We're no longer in our three percent year over year uh, agreement, so this is the first year that we're not in that three percent increase. Um, he did say during our discussions, though, that um, we'll figure something out based on what we are able to pay, kind of thing. My words, not his, but along those lines. So I think there is some room for discussion there. Um, I guess I probably don't want to get into too much. This is public meeting and it is negotiation potentially. So probably shouldn't go much deeper than that right now, but um, there was an opening there. Anyway, I just wanted to let everyone know that that meeting did happen and um, that those arrest rates are up pretty significantly. When I do get the numbers, including the 2019, I'll create a little bar graph to actually see what the trend line looks like. Um, our arrests were up pretty much pretty high compared to surrounding towns, but then when they talk about other incidents like traffic stops and calls coming in, it wasn't quite as inflated. Um, so it's also it's interesting to see, so I'll share that so I'll share that too. Our arrest at our arrest rates, the metric on which they're trying to split up billing. No, billing is it sounds like a lot of billing is based on population. So he does it on the census data too. Yep. Yep. Based on population. Because part of that when we toured there was an uh, eight hour shift or a 12 hour shift. Oh, yeah. Johnson was supposed to get this many hours, Hyde Park was supposed to get this many, and Wolker was supposed to get this many because we literally paid 40, 40, 40. Based on population, so, no, that for those So the arrest time. rates is that, I'm wondering why there was. I'm not sure. I don't why like to hear it, but it's that's what they're saying all of their time is spent on. Um, they don't actually say that. They're really careful about saying that one arrest can be significantly more effort than another arrest. They are very careful about saying they can have 10 arrests that are really quick. They just have paperwork to fill out. But then there's one arrest that take, takes days. And examples of those were the shooting 
um, Q, actually, another example that they brought up. So they they were talking about cases for each of the towns that did take uh, extended periods of time. So I don't think they use that as a metric. I think you know that's one piece of a lot of information. So those arrests don't include traffic stops or no, they're actual arrests. And they have they provided the full budget and spend? No. Because they're not prepared to, or? Well, we haven't started budget specifically. Like I said, this was a lay of the land, the state of the state kind of thing. Um, but the intent is that we will start to get into numbers next time. Fair enough. So, anyway, I'll share with you the information. I'm going to pull up the stop after this slide wrap. I'll keep sharing as information is available. How much of our grand list going in Jackson? Any sense of that? Wasn't it 3% this year? Well, we're taking a lot off of things. Not really. <laughs> tonight, we tonight we did. Tonight we did. How much? Probably $50,000 tonight. Oh, but that's in terms of our entire grand list. Um, I we had pretty good growth numbers this year. I do not remember what so they you were. You got an email customer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. grand list growth. Oh, yeah, we did. We also. So you, so you could probably have some. I at least remember we got an email and it was three point something percent. Oh, it would be. There you go. Go ahead. <laughs> I venture to guess it's not it's not increasing at the same rate that our budget is. Oh, well, that's kind of where I was going. It doesn't have to increase at the same rate as our budget. If it increases enough to cover the increases in our budget, then well, and our the grand list has grown faster than the budget has increased for the last several years in a row. I. Do not think we'll be able to hold to that trend uh, this year, just with the way everything has increased so much. But for the last several years, it has been more grand list growth than, than budget growth. So, in other words, the growth in the grand list is offsetting the growth in the budget. Yes. That would be. Would I have known that from looking at my tax bill. We can do that. I'll I'll create a graph for you. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Don't but seventy percent of your tax bill is for the school. That's good. I can, well, not seventy, but I'll create a line graph showing the trends for both. Because um, I like to email, email it to Evan. Hi, yeah. so Evan. Memorize it. Yeah. Okay. Just because I have the last item is executive yeah. session is discuss employee nice. review. We need a motion for this one. It's three one three eight three. Uh, I motion to enter executive session to discuss employee performance as allowed by one BSA three thirteen naval three. Yep. Okay, we have a motion to do a second. Need, this is the one part. Of second. Right. Motion to second. All in favor. Right. Me. I have it. We are in executive session at 8 28. We got a D Zoom here.